Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Nicole, for those of you who don't know. For those of you who do recognize me, you may know me from my blog or from Instagram. Today, I am really excited because I am doing a super cool tutorial for you guys. If you follow me on my blog, you probably saw me update my office space the other day, or not the other day, I guess a few weeks ago. And it turned out great, but I'm already bored with it. Surprise, surprise. So today I'm going to be redoing it and bringing you guys along with me. I chose a herringbone pattern. So for those of you who don't know what that is, I'll insert a picture here. And that's the pattern that I'm going to be using today. I'm totally doing it all by myself. You can buy stencils for this pattern on Etsy, but I figured why not just give it a go. I have nothing else to do right now during quarantine. I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to complete this project. And then I'm going to change out of this nice comfy fluffy sweater into something that I don't care about wrecking and then we can get started. So let me go grab the supplies and I'll show you what you need. Okay so I got all the stuff that you're going to need to complete this project. First you're going to need some black paint or whatever color you're choosing to do the pattern in. So I just grabbed some black acrylic paint from the dollar store. This is going to work perfectly fine. The only thing is that I might need to do a few coats to get like the consistency that I want as opposed to going and picking up a really good paint from the hardware store where you might need only one coat. Next, you're going to need some rulers to draw on your design and I got rulers from the dollar store just because odds are you're going to get some paint on it and it's better not to use ones that are expensive. Next, you're going to need somewhere to put your paint, so I just got this little paint kit from the dollar store. It comes with a brush and a roller, but the brush in here has very, like the bristles are very spread out as opposed to being very sparse and close together, and it's just too thick to do the lines that I want. So I also grabbed this brush set, and the big brush that you can see here has a flat tip, so that's going to be very helpful for creating my lines. And then last but not least, you're going to want a pencil so that you can draw on your design. And I think this is the most important tool because you don't want to go in with the paint right away. You want to draw your design on, lay it out, make sure it's what you want, and then you can go in with the paint. And this just allows you to fix any mistakes and just perfect it before you make it permanent. So now that you guys know what you need, I'm going to go change into some painting clothes and I will be right back and we can get started. Okay, so now what we're going to do is clear out the space, take all the pictures off the walls, and then I can do my stencils. So, let's get going. Okay, so now that we have all of the space clear, I'm going to start doing my stencil. I'm going to bring you guys up close first so you can see what the wall looks like before, and then we can get stenciling. Alright, so this is the before. Quite plain. I moved the desk over here so I have some space. That is a bracket for my corner shelf, and I'm just going to leave it and go around. Um, we'll see how that goes, but let's get to stenciling. Okay guys, so I have a little bit of the wall done. I'm going to bring you up close to see what I've done so far and kind of explain the process. So let me grab you guys and we'll bring you close. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have all of my lines drawn. I did an inch and a half between each of the lines. 
So that's what these little dots are. I drew the dots down. As you can see in the video, I was kind of doing like line and then moving down and doing another line. But I found it was a lot easier after I did each individual dot and then drew the lines in. Now my next step is to draw the next set of lines that will connect. And I'm going to leave about half an inch between the lines. So that's what this dot is here. That's what we're going to do. So let's keep going. We're losing daylight here. Okay, you guys, so this is a bit of a progress shot. I'm about a quarter of the way done, and it's looking super, super, super good so far. I'm so excited. It's kind of hard to see because it's faint, and I am trying to decide whether or not to continue the pattern all the way down because my desk is actually just going to sit right there. So I might save myself some work and kind of just do the pattern around, but we'll see as I keep going how that goes. Okay, so my wall stencil is all complete. Next, what we're gonna do is mix up the paint. I decided that I wanted to go with a lighter black, almost dark grayish color, just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna play it a little subtle at first, and if I want it to be a little bolder, I can always go back and add the black later. So, let's mix up the paint. Okay, so we're gonna grab some black paint, and we're gonna put the black paint in tray like so then to lighten it I'm gonna add some white paint then I'm gonna take the back of this brush and just give it a, a little mix okay I just have to stop because look how cool this looks you guys How freaking cool. Okay, so as you can see, that's getting like a dark gray consistency. I'm gonna keep going and add some more because you don't want to run out and then have to remix more and then it possibly not be the same color. So I'm just gonna mix up a lot more and then we will get started on the painting.
Yay! Okay, I'm done my pattern. It's all finished behind me. Now I have to put all of my furniture back and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight and I'm gonna check in with you guys in the morning so you can see what it looks like when it's completely finished. So it's actually a few days later and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like now. The total reveal, my cute little office space, I'm super excited about it. And then once we do the reveal, I'll sit back down with you guys and give you some tips and tricks and things that I learned along the way while doing my pattern just to make it a little easier for when you guys give it a go. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close now and show you the finished product and give you a little tour. <laughs> Okay, so this is the finished space, you guys. At first, I didn't carry the pattern all the way down under the desk because I thought that the desk would just cover it, but I was wrong. You could totally see it. So I ended up doing under the desk too, and it looks super good. Ignore these little white stickers. They're just double-sided tape. I was trying to be cool with some fairy lights. And then over here, I put up some photos slash this really cool grid frame. This just has a printout in it. This has some photos of me and the people I love the most. And then this obviously is not my family, but I haven't changed the picture yet. I just wanted to put the frame up. This desk from Amazon is like the best thing ever. Don't mind it. It's a little dirty i got some paint on it from painting this is a cute little jar that i painted and this little guy my girlfriend got for me it's just a cow and it had a little screw on the bottom so i screwed it in the lid i have a million kajillion plants i'm like the craziest plant lady of life but they make me so happy and then of course I have this really comfy awesome chair from Wayfair I got that rug I think from Walmart and I really want to put like a bigger rug here eventually and um yeah that's the space you guys I'm so 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 happy with it and uh, now I'm going to give you guys some, some tips and tricks so that you guys can, can do this too. I really like how it turned out super boho-y um, and it looks like the lines were painted on, which is exactly what I wanted. It's great. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys with some tips and tricks and hopefully this will help you when you're attempting to do the pattern on your own. So tip number one is don't hold your brush when you're painting super close to the bristles. It's really tempting to hold it like a pencil because you feel like you're gonna have more control that way, but in actuality, you're gonna have a lot more control if you hold it towards the end here. When I started out, I definitely was holding the brush like a pencil. And then as I was going along, I realized the further away I held it, the more control I had and I could do one fluid motion as opposed to making the lines choppy, which is actually tip number two. So try to do one fluid motion when you're painting your lines on instead of doing little pieces at a time because you don't want to make your design look choppy any more than it actually does, at least in my case for the boho look. Tip number three is don't soak your brush with paint so that it's dripping, but make sure that it is fully covered. So you want like a really good middle, middle ground. You really just don't want too much or too little. Tip number four, let your paint completely dry before you apply a second coat. This will allow you to see the true color and it also prevents your paint from becoming like sticky um, and tacky and possibly Patchy. And finally, number five, take your time. This pattern, no joke, requires 
so much patience. Patience is key when it comes to completing this project. So definitely take your time. If you're stressed out or angry or it's not working the way you want to, take a breather and then come back to it and you will end up with a flawless accent wall. That's it for this video, you guys. I hope you really liked it and you learned how to create your own boho -y accent wall. If you guys like these videos and these tutorials, make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, and leave a comment if you want. I really love reading your comments and I'll always respond to them. See you guys next time. That's it for me. Bye!